Greetings, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Before I get into this week's topic, would you please kindly follow the link in the description to go to my Odyssey channel? Please give me a follow there if you would. I would greatly appreciate it. So this week I'm going to talk about the Great Reset. And, you know, there seems to be a lot of, um, you know, we have this fear of the unknown, which is very natural. And, you know, changes are happening quite rapidly. I see it as we, we very much are leaving an older paradigm in a certain way. We're leaving sort of a... Um, we're leaving an old sort of kind of world behind and we're stepping into this new world that's quite different and that puts a lot of people on edge right it's putting me on edge something that i've thought about a lot and i've looked at a lot of disparate sources and the first thing i want to say about it is the great reset is very much financial, uh, economic in nature. Economy is like the lifeblood of really, I mean, it touches every aspect of our lives if you think about it. There's even, there, there are even spiritual texts on the topic of money, right? I've recommended the, the Kabbalah of Money before. It's a fascinating book. It's a very spiritual uh, topic and also you know, uh, you know, I realized for many years, and I still don't really know a lot about money or really currency is what we use, and money is a different thing. Money has uh, a different definition. But you have to understand that the Great Reset is first and foremost an economic thing, at least when we're talking about like in the practical terms of human existence of maintaining our lives of surviving that kind of thing okay because remember this group that's talking about this and they they've been talking about this for a long time before i was even alive this group is the world economic forum obviously well world economic forum so you have to think well the great reset's going to have to do with economics right and it really is um, I'm not going to get into the weeds on the economic stuff too much, but suffice it to say that there's going to be a revaluation of the price of gold. Okay. And if, if you, if you watch my companion series to Chris Duane's amazing work that he did in 2015, the greatest truth never told, which is on Odyssey. You should, you really should watch that. I did a companion series where I kind of just uh, explained some of the concepts for the layperson, for the for the beginner, when it comes to, um, you know, like gold and silver. And I've talked about this a lot on on different um, on on over the years, on different series that I've done. And essentially, you know, there's this. There's this, well, first of all, you have to understand something with money. Money is kind of like the central hub of energy that we all kind of draw from in order to just sustain the basic, the basics for our lives, okay? Money's been around for thousands and thousands of years. And unless you have some sort of medium exchange that's common to all, okay, then how are you going to trade you know, whatever skill you have or your job or the time you spend working, you know, what other way are you going to trade that? So obviously money is what we use. Now, we actually use currency. I'm not going to really get into that. There's a great series. I'll put a link in the description on the hidden secrets of money from Michael Maloney. Um, that kind of gets into a lot of really interesting things about that. But just suffice it to say that that is the main part, the main component of this great reset. Now, having said that, the spiritual element of this is almost the exact opposite. 
when we think about this great reset in a spiritual way, it's, it's completely not physical. It doesn't have to do with the sustaining of our lives. Um, where am I going to, you know, where I need to find, you know, like these things that we have to worry about just, just to, just to survive as a human being, right? How am I going to pay my bills? You know, you need to have a, you need to have a job or have some sort of income. You need to, um, kind of, you know, just sustain yourself. Well, the spiritual element of the great reset is the complete opposite. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that an emphasis, if, so if we are always focused on the world, the physical, the world, the, the trappings of this reality in the sense that if we're lulled into this, and it's very easy to, to do, and it's something that that I get pulled into. We, we all do, but if we're focused on this is all there is as far as like the physical world is all there is, and there's nothing else, okay? Then we're going to suffer greatly because that means that we're ignoring the metaphysical aspects that give rise to or that precipitate the great reset okay so what i'm saying is if you if you pre so to prepare yourself physically um for the you know we're, we're collectively we're in so there's the five stages of grief right and this is covered in the uh, greatest truth never told so go on my channel on uh odyssey and you can I mean, it's, it's just, it's such an amazing series, but, um, but if you think about kind of you know, the, 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 the unseen, the hidden forces that give rise to the physical world. Okay. Money is one of those things. Okay. Money is a very esoteric, highly misunderstood. It's a dark art. And ultimately, it has its origins in the metaphysical. It's, it exists as an idea, right? Now, there's a physical element to money. It's very simple to understand. There's like, you know, five components of, of money. And one of those is that, and probably the most important aspect is it has to be a store of value, but not just a store of value, but a stable value. Okay. Now this isn't a perfect analogy, but think about this for a moment. Let's say you have, you need a unit of measure, you know, lengthwise, length, width, height, and you use that, you know, you're using a certain unit of measure. And let's say we're, we're talking about, you know, meters and centimeters. And you're using that to build a house. Okay. Well, or you're using that to build anything you need to rely. You, you basically, the, the premise is that a meter is always going to be a meter, right? A centimeter is always going to be a centimeter. It's always going to be a unit of measure that has that that's always going to be stable. That's always going to stay and you can always count on it to not change because could you imagine, right? If you spec'd out a house, so you had the blueprints and then the, the units change. Well, that just doesn't make sense, does it? Well, we have that problem with our money or I should say currency because I'm talking about the United States and the world has a huge problem because so much of the currencies of the world are pegged to the dollar. And yes, there's bricks. I'm fully aware of that. You know, uh, Russia, Brazil, uh, South Africa, India, right? Fully aware of that. And they are, you know, creating a commodities based system, which is counter to the 
circus coupons of just faith and credit and hopium that the U.S. dollar and all of the other fiat currencies around the world, which is most, I mean, all of them just about are some sort of fiat currency currently. But you have to understand that with a, when, when, when we're talking about using a, using a medium of exchange, it has to be stable in other words, okay? It has to be something that is more or less the same value over long periods of time, okay? Now that we have inflation and all this sort of stuff, we basically have debasement of the currency, which means that this these circus coupons, this funny money, this currency, that was just created out of thin air in 1913 with the Federal Reserve Act. Well, for quite some time, it you know we we would have inflation over the years, but it would be small. It would be negligible. You really wouldn't notice it. Okay. But, you know, and it's kind of a, it's, it, it happens where it's like bit by bit by bit over several generations. And it's not really noticed. No one really cares. Bit by bit by bit, as uh, Andy Schechtman says. But then all at once, all at once, you're like, whoa, what the hell just happened? So that's what's coming. And the bankers know this. I mean, it's just simple mathematics. It's not, you know, it's not a big mystery to a lot of people at this point. Okay. This is something that I've been studying since 2009 and I'm definitely not an expert, but at least, you know, I do, I did see this coming and I mean, anyone who does, who can do basic math can see this coming. It's not difficult. However, we have five stages of grief and this is in uh, um, Chris Dwayne's video on uh, Odyssey. We have five stages of grief and collectively we're going through those stages of grief while we're still collectively in the first stage of grief, which is denial, okay? A lot of people are still in denial collectively. Well, the next stage is the, is the real fun one, guys. Uh, that's the anger stage. The good news is, is that, that the anger stage is the, most, uh, is the shortest lived. It's the most violent, most volatile. But then after that comes the next stage, okay? And I'm not going to get into all of that because I just want to make the I just want to make the point that when we're talking about a unit of exchange between people, okay, between countries, etc., institutions, whatever, if it's not stable, if it loses its buying power, if it loses its value, and exponentially, this is happening more and more and more, okay. We're, we're, we're seeing, like in the stock market, we're seeing just this like hockey stick of just things are going, it's just ridiculous. Things are going up. And then, you know, the yield curve is inverted and we've, we, they're just, it's so skewed. They're playing with all of this, you know, one day they're up, next day they're down and they're just, it's a circus and they're just barely holding it together. Okay. And they can use all these algorithms and they can, you know, leverage AI somewhat to, to make these automatic decisions and stuff, but more banks are failing and all this stuff's happening. Well, why is this happening? It's because the stable unit of measure that we rely upon, again, going back to like, and again, I realize it's not a perfect analogy, but if you're building a house and you have a yardstick or you have, you know, you're, you're using meters, you have to rely on that, right? You have to, you have to rely on a unit of measure that's going to be more or less the same. And that's what, you know, like the Fed in America supposedly guaranteed was stable prices and also you know they talk about insuring jobs or whatever but we don't have that anymore and that's rapidly going away now that's you know the dollar's been has lost 98 percent of its buying power and you know there's a couple of different ways um that you know this could this could go but essentially uh for all practical purposes i mean the u.s, US government's in default and I mean, if you if you tally up everything, um, including Social Security and Medicare and you know the national debt and all that stuff, we're at around two hundred trillion. So even you know the go to the U.S. debt clock and you'll see like thirty four trillion. But that doesn't account for all the other uh, all the other things, the public entitlement programs and everything. Two hundred trillion dollars. And you think you know to to most people here watching this video, they're probably like, well, that doesn't mean anything. They could just make it zero again and that'll be the great reset. But actually 
like I said, the problem is that everything's getting really out of kilter because we don't have a standard unit. We don't have a stable currency. We don't have a stable or stable money. There is a difference. We don't have a stable unit of measure. And that's why gold has always been used. Silver has been a, um, a little more volatile, but gold has been um, used just simply because its value hasn't changed since the ancient Roman Empire. It just hasn't. And, you know, or at least I should say it's changed so little that it's like negligible. Okay. So when you take a currency like the dollar, you have to peg it against something that is uh, stable. And it stays stable for a time. And it was in America for a long time. Um, I think the average price for an ounce of gold in America for a long time, probably 100 years, you, you may want to look this up, it was like $20, $20.67. Okay. When I was broke and didn't have any money and I was listening to, I'm going to date myself here. Um, uh, but when I was listening to Art Bell on the radio and I was living in a studio apartment, I was like 18 years old, 19 years old. And I'm listening to him talking about gold and why you should buy gold. And I'm like, I trust Art Bell. I believe him. I didn't know a damn thing about money or anything. I was broke as a joke. And I remember gold then was like $300. And now it's like $2,300. But it's not the price of gold that's gone up. See, that's there's so many subtleties about money that are lost on the general public. And it's not that gold is worth $2,300. It's only that I'm conditioned to think in dollars or you're conditioned to think in, you know, British sterling or, you know, lira or you know whatever the currency is euros we're conditioned to think and you know to price something in a certain way well that that measuring that way of measuring price is just getting totally off kilter because it's taking more and more circus coupons to buy the same thing so it's not like a gallon of milk is actually worth more or or it costs more to produce or it takes more time and effort actually usually it's the it's the opposite usually over time industries find ways to refine and make uh processes of um manufacturing more efficient so that the prices can go down but prices fluctuate for all sorts of reasons you know what's available for resources and that kind of stuff so that's going to be the number one component to this um, this great reset is that they're going to have to re revalue the price of gold. So it's currently at twenty three hundred or twenty four hundred right now, but it's going to shoot way up, and they're going to be forced to do that in order to roll out the next kind of stable currency. But make no mistake, um, your average person just thinks, oh, we don't use the gold standard. We don't do any of that stuff. Um, I see you, Gloria. We don't, you know, we don't use that anymore. That's an antiquated and no, wrong. That's totally wrong. The international banks all have, um, for, for quite some time, gold was kind of low on the assets uh, tier, but now, it's back to a tier one asset as of like, I think it was like three or four years ago. And they're repatriating gold. Banks are re repatriating gold like crazy because that's part of the great reset is that they're going to do this revaluation and they're going to peg a new currency to gold. And then they're just going to start again. That's the great reset. So don't get confused. Um, you know, just understand that a stable unit of measure and you can't just invent it. Because every time you invent a fiat currency like the U.S. dollar or whatever, I mean, every fiat currency in history has always returned to zero without exception. And the dollar is not going to be an exception. I guarantee you. It's just not. It's just based on confidence and hopium right now. And confidence and hopium are pretty low. And so it's just a matter of time. Now, I'm not here to deliver this message of doom and gloom and all this kind of stuff. But that's just the physical element but what about the metaphysical element what about the spiritual element well the spiritual element's very simple it's the exact opposite of worrying about your needs worrying about um you know what's going to happen 
this kind of stuff. And that's hard. It's, it's very difficult to not worry about those things, right? It's very difficult to kind of um, try to forget about them. But that's not really um, the approach you should be taking, or at least that's not the approach I'm taking. The approach really is to realize that this isn't all there is in, in, in the sense that like only the physical world is and and there's nothing else because that's patently just untrue. I mean, if, if you take any time to meditate, if you take any time to kind of contemplate and think about, well, where do these ideas come from? Where, where do these fundamental forces that give rise to reality come from? Well, they're, they're not, they're non-physical. And so my message to you, if you're worried about this stuff, is to really go inward and really focus on contemplation, meditation, prayer, okay? And really think about what this physical world is and that this, so, you know, really having this like hyper-focused emphasis on just physicality and what it's, it's you know, we have we, we can get wrapped up in the world as far as like the sense right the sense world and we can get lulled into this false sense that like this is this is all there is this is what there is but it's just simply not true and so yes we have to live in the physical world yes there's a um you know i'm not checked out of the physical world by any means in fact i'm fully invested into this physical experience I'm having. I'm not pretending like it's, it's, it doesn't exist, but it's impermanent and it's not eternal. Okay. The metaphysical forces of, you know, which give rise to this physical world that's always changing, you know, that, that's what's actually eternal. Okay. Um, everything in the physical world just passes it changes forms it will pass something new comes in even one day the pyramids will just be dust everything just goes you have to accept that if you cling on to this notion that you know you have this sadness that things should always be this the way they are and gosh you know this happened and that happened and if you're just clinging to that desperately to the aspects of the physical world and you're just holding on you're you're really just grasping at smoke and it's just an impossible exercise and you know to think about instead how how can we come to accept the fact it's just a simple fact how can we accept the fact that we're getting older that the world's changing rapidly Things are always changing. That's the very nature of the fundamental essence of reality. I mean, if you look at if you look at energy, it just fluctuates naturally, right? Get yourself like a voltmeter or a kilowatt or something, and you know those kilowatt plugs. It tells you how much wattage you're pulling uh, on your devices. Plug that in and look at it. it's never just a constant number. It's always changing. It's always fluctuating. Right. And so back to this thing about, and I'm kind of floating in and out of the physical, non physical, and there's a reason for that. But back to this thing about having a yardstick of, or a unit of measure for, for anything that's stable, the reason we use gold is just simply because it's the, it's of the physical metals, and there are, there are many that are worth, um, that are valuable, but of the physical metals, it's the one that's recognized to be the most eternal. And so you really have to think about, you know, and it's, I realize it's difficult because our lifespans are so short that our perspective is just so narrow. It's like we're looking at reality through a straw. And then we just, we can get wrapped up in this, oh gosh, it's just so short in my life and then, and then, right? That's just all, just, you gotta, you, you really gotta let go of that and just, and just kind of, first of all, understand the experience you're having or, or try to 
deepen your understanding of what's really happening and know that you know this great reset thing is going to happen i mean these cha changes happen all the time anyway we're just giving it a specific name but if you're if you're more prepared spiritually for the for the uh, changes that are coming then there's going to be a lot less anxiety a lot less fear um, focus on acceptance and acceptance doesn't mean you don't change anything it doesn't mean you just lay down and take it it doesn't mean that at all it's only when you've accepted this kind of goes back to the uh, five stages of grief because acceptance is the final stage you know you've got all these stages you've got denial anger you've got you know bargaining depression and you come into acceptance and this stage of acceptance if you can get to that stage about your own life about reality as it is it's just a fact that this reality is just impermanent and you know this physic the physical uh, there's a physical component to life but that's not the only component and if you focus just on that well you're you're pretty much hosed so my advice is to try to go in inward and explore those essential forces that are non-physical and prepare yourself accordingly because a lot of changes are on the way and I don't know you know I can't make predictions and, and I don't know what's going to happen but the only thing I really can do anything about is you know I can go inward I can the only thing I can control really is uh, myself and when I say that you know it's not really about control it's just about accepting because accepting is kind of it's an interesting sort of balance between relinquishing control and taking ownership because once we accept that things are changing that physical this physical world is impermanent we have this I mean everyone feels this this great change and people are acting different things are changing but if you take a step back and realize well there's always change first of all we're just collectively recognizing um, some sort of event that is definitely economically uh, based and there's a good I mean that's a huge reason for that I just explained it so just think about that and I would say if you want to kind of one thing to help me feel better not only because because I'm not just saying sit on a pillow close your eyes and just you know go into hopium land and just pretend right the worst thing you can do and and you do I hope you you know I might get some comments of people just not maybe watching like three minutes and thinking they understand what I'm trying to say but you know escapism isn't going to help you you have to do the opposite of trying to escape from the ills of reality in this world and this is a very corrupt world we're very sick collectively and individually there's all sorts of mental illness and I don't have to tell you all that stuff okay physical illness whatever okay but to try to escape to run away it's just gonna make it worse so to accept to go inward to accept reality then you can really do something about it okay if we try to run away from reality uh, that doesn't help if we really try to confront reality head-on and sort of control well, that doesn't work either we already know that and I think collectively people are realizing that there's a middle path and it must be uh, it must be something that we do with ourselves because you can't control others you can't run away I mean you really can't but you can accept you can work on acceptance and acceptance isn't something that you just decide intellectually and you're just oh I got it I accept it right there's a lot of um, I encounter those people sometimes religious people a lot 
that they found Jesus and they're on board and this kind of stuff. But I'm very skeptical, and I think, I think maybe intellectually, and there's some, comp- you know, intellectually they're on board with it, or maybe they want to, you know, there's they don't want to accept their fears and they just kind of, yeah, I'll go along with it because I'm going to get, you know, whatever. But you really got to accept it much deeper than just intellectually. You really have to, you have to become uh, this sort of, you have to develop this sense and it doesn't happen overnight. You don't make a decision. So if you're watching this and you're trying to decide, that's the wrong way. You're not doing it wrong. But what you can do, little by little, right? It's a bit by bit by bit. Accept, go inward, meditate. Even if it feels like bullshit, make a habit out of it. Initially, it probably will to a lot of people that are very skeptical, that are just intellectual, and they're not kind of you know, embracing the intuition. They're not accepting because if you accept what's coming if you can accept within yourself then really what comes is something that um is not as i mean it's just part of the impermanent world so why should that be such a scary thing right we're all going to have these these the, these times and these moments. I'm not saying this is the way to like completely uh, shield yourself and never feel any pain ever, and you're never going to have difficulty, and you're never going to have anxiety or fear or whatever. But it's going to help tremendously. I'm saying so. It's going to help. It's helped me quite a lot. So this is just something I'm sharing with you guys. So hopefully that helps. Well, have yourself. And I know this was kind of like, I mean me being an intuitive and looking at disparate sources and they kind of swirl around and then I bleh. (laughs) Um, You know, hopefully there's something in there that makes sense to you. And I realize this one's kind of of a long one, but hey, that's just how it goes. If you have any questions, comments, et cetera, would love to read them. Please follow my Odyssey. Anyway, have yourself a wonderful, wonderful week and I'll see you next time.